Celtics. Okay, brothers and sisters, let us stand up, let us welcome the bishop. I come together, I come together, all the nations, all the nations, they'll come and see my glory, they'll come. And see my glory, 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 glory. glory. of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let us depart. Well, first, brothers and sisters, we were very grateful that Bishop Di Marcio came to this uh, meeting, so we give him an applause. We just, Father, want to present who is here, the, most of these uh, brothers who went to this pilgrimage and uh, from the different parish of the diocese. Huh? Here, here there are the, the youth from the different parish of the diocese and from this parish, especially from San John of Arc and San Gabriel, can I stand up. Father Nicolás, the pastor, and Father Renato also went with them. We give them an applause. And uh, the parish also, St. Peter and Paul is here. St. Peter and Paul. The brother St. Peter and Paul. Father Julio. On applause. There are many in the way, it looks like. And now here the brothers also, Our Lady of Peace. A lady of peace, stand up, here in the back. Welcome. <laughs> then the brother from St. Bridget. St. Bridget. St. Bridget. Welcome, an applause. <laughs> and uh, the brother from St. Pius, the fifth. An applause from the... On the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary with Father Victor, the pastor. Welcome. <laughs> there are some brothers also from, uh, from Rockville Center Diocese who went to this pilgrimage, Long Island. An applause. Uh, also, there are brothers for the Misha Gentes here, Ramon, Belen, and some sisters. Welcome. Oh, okay. Also, with us is our, our catechist, the national catechist, by the way, Giuseppe Claudio, Father Angelo. Un applauso. 
also with the occasion of this uh, presentation of the icon, is here David Lopez and Beatriz and his, uh, and his children and the brother who helped him, I don't know, is uh, here. Also Francesco and Seila who work in this uh, with the baptismal phone and Carmen Morales here. Un aplauso. And Joshua. And there's the, the priest here, Father, Father Esteban, Father Renato, Father Victor Bolaños, uh, Father Miguel Angel and Father Julio, and, and the seminary. The seminary is here? Seminary Brooklyn? No? Ah. So the rector and vice rector. Yeah. yeah. Father Atilio, there is, and, and Father, of course, Father Nicolás, the pastor, and who is, is any missing that I didn't introduce? Jose Carlos from Arizona. Jose, Father Bob, of course, Father Bob, Sadlak. <laughs> and uh, Father Jose Carlos from Arizona. This uh, I think in Arizona. Stand up. An applause. Okay. This is the, the whole assembly. There are some brothers of the community who didn't go to the pilgrimage. If they can stand up from the San John of Arc or San Gabriel. Stand up. Hector and Mary Ellen, Cecilia, some brothers from San Gabriel, responsible. An applause. This is this is the, the, the assembly that they participating here tonight, Father. They asked me to say a word, uh, Bishop, very briefly, just two things. The first thing, there are many who have participated to this pilgrimage that was in Gettysburg, where there was the, the terrible bloodshed, the massacre, and uh, there were about 15,000 on Sunday. There came the cardinal from Washington, they introduced the meeting, and then the meeting was presided by the nuncio, and there was also Father Bishop Peter Baldacchino. It was a beautiful meeting. There was 15,000, and there were many who answered to the call. There were 250 boys, 400 girls, 300 families. It was really incredible, the answer. I think that one of the, th the things that also helped uh, to see the importance of this call is that during this time of the coronavirus, the priests were helping the uh, ship. They, they, they never felt abandoned. They felt them close to them. I think that this was a fundamental. In fact, when we asked for an applause for the priest, everybody applauded. Is it true? <laughs> everybody applauded. So there was many, a, a beautiful meeting. Even the nuncio that in the beginning was a little impatient, you know, because, you know, <laughs> they, they said, but if it was Kiko, he would have spoken three hours. You know, they said, but this, there was no consolation for, but in the beginning was a little impatient by seeing the answer of the youth and of the families, he was really moved. He was really moved. He made a beautiful homily. And the next day he said to the, to the old denunciator, uh, this is what we should be doing. Only the neocatechumenal way is doing it, and we should learn yeah. what, what is important. This is not to, bo to boast, because what we did is not us. It's not us. We are just uh, an imperfect instrument. So th this is the first thing. That they, uh, this, many of this, uh, the, this youth, this, this pilgrimage was a beautiful experience, uh, giving the, going two by two, announcing the good news, also the pilgrimage as a time of living not in our plans, which is beautiful, is a kind of refreshing, no? instead of being without the cell phone. Everybody was happy to give away the cell phone because we are, ens we are enslaved, we are already the chip. We don't have the chip in the head, but we have yeah. the chip in the, the controllers. They know where we are, what we buy, what we think, what we say. But everybody was happy, you know, to live, to live uh, two weeks, ten days, abandoned to the Lord. This is the first thing. The second thing, 
is that uh, we are here to bless this icon. The icon is not a sacrament, but it's a sacramental, it's a presence of the Lord. In the, in the, in the Orthodox tradition, when they see an icon, when they see the face of Mary, they, they kneel three times, they, they bless, you know, three times, because it is a presence of the Lord. And in fact, we were in this day in, in Washington, where there is a beautiful icon, which was uh, Kiko worked, also David working there. It was beautiful, beautiful, uh, really make present the presence of, the, of, the, of the, the heaven looking at us. And I think this is very important because uh, in today's battle, the, the, the art is very important, the beauty is very important, and uh, looking at, as you call this, the gate of heaven. Echo, this is the, really the gate of heaven. I think that uh, this is something very important, historical in a sense, historical, echo, that somehow a church which was kind of, let's say, whatever, echo, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, with the colors was all, all, uh, all uh, wrong, all the colors were wrong, uh, you know, was purple and green and what? Somehow, echo the, the, it was a miracle that it was thanks to you because you allowed this, promoted this, and so we are very thankful that this night you are going to bless this, which makes present heaven. And we would like to give you an applause to thank you for this work. And, eh? I don't know. You know, say, I don't know what you have organized. No, I just want to use the opportunity, Father, but some of the brothers who are here stood up in this meeting. So just to present those who stood up at the, at the meeting in Gettysburg, they can stand up now. The families, all the young. So these are some stood up for the seminary, some for family mission, or some two young vocations there. So all these brothers. Let's give him an applause. Let us stand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come tonight viewing this work of art which gives us a view of the future, the future that is in store for all who love you. Give us a share in the love that you give us, and we may in this world be your instruments. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom need I fear? The Lord fortress of my life, of whom should I be afraid? I am sure I shall see your goodness, O Lord. Wait for the Lord, take courage,
hides me under his shelter. In times of trouble, he hides me deep in his tent, sets me safe on a rock. I am sure. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and ever shall, shall be, world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light and my help. Whom should I fear? I long to look on you, O Lord. Do not turn your face from me. I long to look on you, O Lord. Do not turn your face on me. O Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer. Of you my heart has spoken. Seek his face. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. Dismiss not your servant in anger. You have been my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my help. Though father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Instruct me, Lord, in your way. On an even path, lead me. When they lie in ambush, protect me from my enemy's greed. False witnesses rise against me, breathing out fury. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him, hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was the beginning, the beginning is, is now and ever shall be, be world, world without, without end, end. Amen. amen. I long to look on you, O Lord, do not turn your face from me. I long to look on your face, Lord. Do not turn your face from me. Praise the Lord. All peoples of the earth, nations, give him glory, because strong is his love for us, and his faithfulness lasts forever. Nations, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, all peoples of the earth, nations, give him glory, because great is his love. And his mercy is forever. Nations, give him glory. Praise the Lord. All 
peoples of the earth, nations, give him glory. He is the first one of all creation, and every way the primacy is his. Let us give thanks to the Father for having made you worthy to share the lot of the saint and light. He rescued us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his beloved Son. Through him we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creatures. In him, everything in heaven and earth was created, things visible and invisible. All were created to him, all were created for him. He is before all else that he is. In him, Everything continues in being. It is he who is his head of the body, the church. He who is the beginning, the firstborn of the, of the death, so that primacy may be his and everything. It pleased God to make absolute fullness reside in him, and by means of him to reconcile everything in his person, both in earth and in the heavens, making peace through the blood of his cross. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will all be, world without end. Amen. He is the firstborn of all creation. In every way, the primacy is his. In every way, the primacy is his. Please stand. Surpassing greatness. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Praise Him with blood of the trumpet, praise him with harps and guitars, praise him with drums and dancing, praise him with flutes and strings, alleluia, Praise Him! 
the Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Ghost according to Luke. The seventy two returned rejoicing and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy. And nothing will ever harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you. But rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord. Just now, Father, um, we um, there are three brothers who are in the, in the pilgrimage who would like to give their experience or how the Lord um, touched them in this uh, time in their life. You know, with all this, we are like a week, two weeks, some of us, uh, visiting many places and celebrating the Eucharist and the world. So this brother will now briefly, will give their experience. Uh, if I can stand up, Patrick. Patrick from San Junior. Hello, uh, my name is Patrick. <clears throat> I'm 18 years old. Um, I'm not sure, Bishop, if you remember me, but I just graduated from Cathedral Prep and I uh, gave the salutatorian address. So um, first, uh, I think I'm uh, a very good boy. And you know, I work very hard, I get good grades, uh, I play sports and I, I work really hard at them. Um, I don't get in a lot of trouble. And because of this, I think I'm, I, I'm a good person. And I deserve to be rewarded for my actions. And I see that because I think I'm good, I think that my will is good. And that God's will should be my will. And it's very upsetting to me because my will is not God's will. And I see many times that my will um, is crushed. My plans are crushed. Um, we had COVID and it messed up a year and a half of my schooling. 
And then for college, I wanted to go to St. John's University and play baseball. And, um, and because of my good grades, I thought I'd be valedictorian. But instead, God crushed my plans and said, no, you'll be salutatorian. You'll be the first loser. And then instead of going to St. John's, you go to Hunter, which doesn't have a baseball team. And in the face of this, I saw an injustice. I thought that I deserved to get what I wanted because I did everything I was supposed to do. And I found that I became very ungrateful. I felt entitled. And um, going into the summer, I, I was kind of bummed. I was not looking forward to going to school. And then I heard about this vocational meeting and this pilgrimage for the youth. And I said, OK, maybe I'll get a word. So we went, and uh, many things touched me. But most importantly, or most uh, poignantly, was we went to this little parish in Youngstown, Ohio, in the middle of nowhere, and we were greeted by a community of old people, very few old people, and it was beautiful. And then we went to the Eucharist, and Father Felipe, who was the priest there, gave his experience through the homily, and I tell you concretely that I have never heard something so powerful in my life. Listening to his experience, I, I almost became very emotional because of how he spoke about suffering and the cross. And I sat right in the front. So during the consecration, I saw him. And he has this problem with his arm, and he has lots of physical problems. And I saw as he raised the body and the blood, he was shaking and he was sweating. And it was a sign for me to see this for him, that he was suffering a lot. And... I run away from my sufferings. I reject my reality, and I don't like to suffer. I hate to suffer. And during this pilgrimage and during that, uh, his experience in particular, um, it was like God was speaking to me for the first time that I can say, saying that I am ungrateful and that everything I have is good and that all the things that I think that are wrong in my life, all the things that I think that our injustices are not, they're blessings. And I'm very grateful for this pilgrimage because it was exactly what I needed. I needed to listen, I needed to hear that I am ungrateful. I needed to hear that I'm not perfect and that I don't deserve everything I think I deserve. And yet, all these things, that God still loves me despite my imperfection. And so I'm very grateful for this pilgrimage um, I'm very grateful for uh, the National Catechist team, for the Catechist team that brought us. Um, I'm very grateful for the church and for the Neocatechumenal Way and the community that I'm in. I walk in St. Joan of Arc in Jackson Heights. Um, and I, I'm here today just grateful. Not as grateful as I should be, but I'm grateful for everything that's happened. Um, yeah. Melissa. Yeah. Hi, my name is Melissa. Hi, my name is Melissa. I'm 23 years old, and I'm here to give my experience about the pilgrimage. Um, what, what gave me the courage to go to this pilgrimage is the plans that I had before the pilgrimage even happened. Um, funny thing. I planned to get a summer job. I signed to get it. And then the announcement to the pilgrimage happened, which, like everybody else's plans, they were shattered. Um, but... What also gave me the courage is to see how God would provide because we were going through financial struggles and uh, for me it's very uncomfortable to go to different places and having to depend on someone else knowing that I have a disability. 
But I see that God made this possible because he put people in front of me who were willing to help. And he gave me the courage to say, forget about the job. I'm going to the pilgrimage. I need this. I need to know what God has for me, especially because throughout this time, I've been going through a point in my life that was taking me to complete darkness. And I see that this pilgrimage took me out of that and gave me this happiness that I thought I would never find. Um, especially when we went to Detroit. That's when I saw my heart. I saw this dark place. Like, what am, what am I doing here? What, what's the point of me being here? But I see that today, especially going to, I got the name of, um, not Detroit. Um, I gave my experience as well in um, Baltimore. And I see that there, God said, I have a plan for you. You just have to be patient. And he gave me the courage to also give my experience there, which is something that I never thought was going to be possible for me to travel the world and to announce what God has done for me. So that's my experience. Uh, hi, my name is oh. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jesus. Uh, I'm fr I'm 16 years old. I'm from <laughs> um, I'm from St. Peter and Paul. Uh, I I can to start off. I I won't be that. I I'm not such a public speaker, so I won't be as good as Patrick or Melissa. But bear with. Um, uh, you know, this year has been super difficult for me. Uh, so in the last pilgrimage we had, uh, I, came, I went expecting, I went to that pilgrimage expecting everything would touch me, you know, that, you know, God's word, God's will would be done in me because I, because I was ready. I, you know, I, I wanted everything that God wanted. I wanted to be touched when, when I wanted. I didn't, I didn't see God's plans. I just saw my plans and I said, oh, this is what God wants because I want what he wants, um. And I came out of that pilgrimage so empty. I said, I said, what a waste of time. I, came, I, went, I went to this pilgrimage for what? I wasted money. I wasted my, my summer time. And I did nothing. I got nothing out of it. And I, I don't know why I went. And then going on throughout the year, my, my, she's not my grandmother, but she, she's, she's like that family member that, that's the extension of, of your family. She, she was my grandmother, you know. She died and I went through a crisis. I, I went through depression. I, I had these anxiety attacks. I was crying all the time. My family never knew any of this. Um, I never told any of them because, you know, I thought keeping this to myself is, you know, it's fine. And going, just going throughout this whole period, I, after that point that she died, I, I started failing school. I didn't get, I didn't care, you know. And what I, what I told my family, I was like, you know what, it's corona. They won't care, you know, they'll pass me. And even if they don't, it's fine, you know. I'm, I'm a good enough student that I can persuade my teachers to, to, you know, just pass me on, if anything. And I kept on going through life like this. Uh, I failed completely. Um, and then this pilgrimage comes around. And I see that they announced this pilgrimage and even, even though they announced this pilgrimage, um, I, I, you know what, I signed myself up to summer school and for a job. And then while the pilgrimage is happening, they tell me I had to do summer school and my job. And I, I was so struck, I was like, okay, I, w I said, you know, this pilgrimage is first, but I still have to work, I still have to go to school. And, the, and God is so good that during this pilgrimage, I didn't have to work. <laughs> Literally, I, my super, I have no supervisor yet, so, so they said that I didn't have to work. I was fine, you know? And I was so grateful when, when this happened. And 
school happened, I had to go to school during every morning prayer. And you know, I, I, I was so mad during every morning prayer. I was like, at the beginning of every morning prayer, I'd be like, dang, I gotta go to school. And then, at, and then right when we start morning prayers, I forget all about school because I saw that God was more important in the moment. I saw that, you know, school is important as well, but I can figure it out after. I can, that God was, help, was trying to give me a word, you know, that I hadn't had in a while because I'd been walking blindly. I just been going because my parents tell me to go. I've never, I haven't gone because I had to go be, for me. And in this pilgrimage, you know, I saw, we went to a lot of places. Um, one of the places in Detroit, Solomon, uh, Solomon Gundy, uh, Solomon, Sol Solanus Casey. Oh, thank you. Uh, Solanus Casey. I saw that his, his last words were like, it hit me so hard. I, even though I, I didn't really, I wasn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't really, I wasn't, what's the word? Uh, the saint didn't really, like his story didn't really touch me. When I heard these last words, I was so struck. I was like, how could he, how could somebody say this, you know? You, I've never, I've never seen anybody been able to say, you know, I give, I give my, my life to Jesus Christ, you know, or my soul. Without, without, without even just a little bit of like, you know, I'll, I'm saying this, but it's, it's not, I'll, I still, I still, uh, I don't, I don't believe it fully. He, he was saying it with his whole heart. And I, I could not believe that because I, I saw my life and I, I said, you know, I've said this before, you know, I want to do Christ's will, but I never did his will. You know, I, I, I did whatever I want. And this really touched me. You know, I couldn't, this whole time I was living for myself uh, and living, living also for, for my family, you know. And by my, in, my, in my sufferings, I was by myself, but I would put a, a fake face to my family. I, whatever they needed, I'd be the first one there, you know. My, my sisters needed help with their kids. Oh, I'm right there. Don't worry about it. And I would put this fake face so that everybody would think I was fine, you know. Even though I, I, would, I would see that my family would be like, are you okay? Or I'd be like, I'm fine. Don't even worry about it, you know. All's good. And I could see that this wasn't good. And during this pilgrimage, uh, in the meeting with, with everyone, I saw Caetano's uh, name. Yeah, Caetano, uh, he's a seminarian in Brooklyn, a seminarian in, the, that, in, in Brooklyn. Um, and he was giving this, this catechesis, I guess, and he was saying, you know, don't even worry, of, don't worry about what the Lord has in store, uh, about oh, what would happen if you answer his call. Just answer his call. You know, answer the Lord's call if you feel it. And I was... <laughs> I had these, after I heard those words come out of his mouth, my, I, I didn't listen to the rest of the catechesis. My head went blank. And, you know, I didn't stand up because there was, during this whole experience of corona, there was multiple times where, you know, I had homosexual experiences because I was so confused. I was so deep in masturbation, sexuality, in those sins that I didn't know what to do with myself. So I just threw myself at the first thing that I saw, you know? And when he said this, I said, wow, what, is, what if this is my calling, you know? What if, what if I felt this calling, I, it brought me to tears, and even though I, I, I didn't go because I felt, you know what, maybe it, is, maybe it is my calling, but I can't do this because of what I've done in the past. And I see that God is so forgiving that I went to talk to my catechist and to Padre Michelangelo, which is the pre, pre, uh, he's pre, the pre vocational, uh, pre, yeah, he's in charge of pre vocational. And I asked, I went to Nesson and him and Anna Maria and I, and I start, and I asked them, you know, I told them this, this, most of this experience. And I was like, I need help. And. I told them, you know, I didn't get up. I felt the calling, but I didn't get up because of this. And they said, don't worry, because this is what God has planned for you. You know, you go through these sufferings because even though I've heard this line so many times, you go through these sufferings because this is what God has planned for you. 
I never believed it till then, you know. I always heard it as a kid because I grew up in the way. And it was just always, God has this plan for you. God has this suffering for you. And I never saw it, saw it so clearly in my life so, to be true till, till I, I gave my full, full experience. You know, I let everything go. This was, this was another catechesis in the, uh, in the pilgrimage that it was a battle of freedom, you know. A battle with, with you and the devil and a battle between you and yourself, you know. And I see that all this time I le I've let the devil win. I've let my, my, I let the devil win and I let him control me. And I let him say, you know, don't ever speak about this experience because it's super shameful. You know, you fall your whole life to say, oh, you're not gay because everybody judged you as a little kid and said you were gay. And, and I, I now see that this doesn't, this doesn't define who I am, you know, because the Lord, the Lord forgives me. And, you know, if, if, this is my, if this is what the Lord has called for me to do, that I should, I should do it. Because I never, I've never felt so, so happy and sad at the, sa at the same time as, as in that moment that I was crying hearing those words. And that's my experience. Tonight, we find ourselves before two of the most ancient Christian ways of encountering God. First, the pilgrimage, and secondly, our especially icons. They are the most ancient ways that Christians tried to find God. In a pilgrimage, we leave our homes and we go to some place sacred, someplace different, because sometimes we miss God right next to us. But when we travel with other people usually, and we have a purpose to pray, to find God, we do. We encounter God because we've left behind many things, many of our problems, many of our faults, and we go on a pilgrimage and we find God. We are touched by God because we we're searching for him. That's what a pilgrimage is about, a search for God. Life is a pilgrimage. That's all our life. It's a, a search for God. And sometimes we have to be more intense and we take a real pilgrimage of, of, of when we move from where we are. Pilgrimage one of the most ancient Christian ways to encounter God. Because we all want to find God in this world and in the life to come. When we think of the icon, you know, the icons have been called the window into heaven. We look at an icon and we see something very sacred. We see images of people who are saints, angels, images of God. You know, there's some religions like the Muslims, you can't picture God, it's impossible because God is a pure spirit and they do not have anything that would be an image. And even the Hebrew people, you cannot have false gods before you, any image of God. There's no Jewish symbol or image of God. But thank God, God wanted us to know him. And he sent his son Jesus Christ into the world who took upon himself our nature so we became like God and so that we could know God. And so when we see these beautiful images behind us, they are a window into heaven. They teach us what is to come, the glory of heaven, the mystery of heaven. We don't know that much about heaven. Jesus said some things in the gospel, but most people 
We have all these images of angels and uh, uh, gates and uh, all kinds of things that maybe are not exactly what it's like because heaven is God's presence. And who is God? God is love. We don't have any other definition of God in the scriptures except that. God is love, St. John tells us. So when we encounter love in this world, it's just a little bit like what we expect God to be in the world to come. Because God is pure love, only love. And we imitate that love in our lives. And so tonight we heard some good witnesses about pilgrimages, how they, they changed these young people's lives, made them think differently about themselves and about God. And tonight we're going to have an explanation by the artist of this, uh, this wonderful icon. It's a big icon. It's almost the size of the church, really. When we dedicated the church, it wasn't finished. So I've come back again, so we bless it tonight and recognize what it is. It'll take years for each one of us, each one of you who worships here, to understand each part of this. And you're going to see one part that, that speaks to you, that tells you about God. What could it be? St. John crying? Our Lady looking this way, who knows what it is. There will be something, believe me. The more you look over these years to come, you will find your special spot here where you will encounter God, where you will have a window into what heaven is like. So tonight we are happy, obviously, so happy that we can bless this icon that reminds us of God's presence in this world. Uh -huh. he, uh, he's he's going to bless him. He's going to explain. Yes. He's going to do okay. Yeah, yeah. Father, Father, thank you for coming. I am very happy with your presence. Um, also because Giuseppe and Claudia are with us. Um, the first thing I want to tell you, I'm going to try to do 15 minutes, not more. I'm going to try. The first, we are missionaries. We are painters, missionaries. That means what we are going to do Tonight, for me, is very important the blessing these images. That may uh, bring uh, meaning to our work. We make this for free. I am not going to go back, go from this church for one dollar. For sure, they help us to live. To I think, I think they are helping to to pay the light or to pay the water or, or to eat. Uh, because it's what I receive from my my master, no? I, I was an artist living in Paris doing my life, and Kiko told me, he was my catechist there, he told me, help me to bring the gospel 
because no, there is nothing in the church. There is nothing. No one is uh, evangelizing with the images. Today, there is nothing. We live in a practical heresy in the, in the church. If, uh, all the church that we build, that we find in all the world, they are without images. Only Rubnik is doing something. Uh, okay, we live in this situation. Um, just to introduce a little bit, I am very happy with the presence of the of this youth. Was not uh, supposed, no, to do at the beginning. Was not uh, uh, this meeting was different, but I think it's God willing. You know, this church is San Gabriel, no? San Gabriel, the Pope he proclaimed during this year the jubileo of San Gabriel in order. So he, how is this? Uh, he. The youth, como, sí, he, um, no, eh, encomendó, ¿cómo se dice encomendó? Entrusted the youth to him. It's not, maybe, and we didn't realize this, you know, when I met, when I met um, your father Joaquino, he said me, I want to do this because the youth, because The gospel said when the, the son of uh, the man will come, he will find faith on earth. I want to prepare my church for the future and for the youth, for to, in order to help them. But I, we realize that uh, we are living now the 100 years of the proclamation of holiness of this San Gabriel. And the Pope proclaimed him protector of the youth. And nothing of this was uh, premeditated from Joaquino, from us, from Nicolas, from no one. It's the, it's the will, was the will of God. Incredible. Um, also, um, we can enter in this uh, altar piece through the center. In the center, the center of all this mystery that we have here is a youth, a, a young man also, is Christ. Christ in the Trinity, in the Trinity is interesting because the interpretation of Kiko about the Trinity, he put at the center, not a God, he put it at the center, Christ, the Son. Not the Father, the Son. He put it at the center, the Son. Many interpretations about the Trinity of Rubliov, you can understand, Kiko followed with uh, Rubliov, maybe the, the, the best uh, Christian artist in the history. In the, in the composition, he followed Rubliov. Also in the colors, he was very obedient to the... Also, uh, Kiko is a great artist, but he entered in this humility to accept the behind Rubliov is the tradition of the church. Well, um, there are many interpretations, no? In the center is, is God for sure. No, he said, no, no. The center is the son. It's Jesus, it's the son. And the parents... The family is in order to help our kids to, rea to find their vocation, their mission in the church, in the life. The mission in the life. This is the entrance, the Porta Celli. I like it a lot when you spoke about Porta Celli, the other, the other visit to the church. Uh, this is the Porta Celli for, for all of us. Uh, because it, the father... At the, in the right, in green, this is the father, with the face of the Sindon. It's very deep, this, um, not the authority. He put um, the sign of the father in the humility, eh? of, uh, the, like the Sindon, no? The, the, the Sindon. Okay. The Shrap. But the Father has a plan. God has a plan of salvation for all of us. At this plan, passed by his son. And it's like God with the hand is doing like this. Peep, 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 peep. He's bringing the chalice close to the sun. This is my plan. I am not indifferent to the sufferings of you. Of you. And I have a plan. And the plan is this chalice. Christ is looking the mother, like we do, no? Pa mama, 
Mama, look, Papa, he's telling me something uh, strange. Eh? I need to drink this chalice. And Mary, with the silence of Mary, Christ, uh, he realized the mission. The mission is to drink this chalice and to uh, climb, climb, or climb, climb on that tree. This is not more the tree of Abraham. Abraham welcomed the three angels, no? Like we uh, welcome uh, the Trinity in our life, in the church. He is accepting this challenge. It's for this, many people ask, ask, when we paint this icon, ask why the hand of Christ is uh, not painted? You forgot to paint that hand. All or other uh, hands are painted in brown, but this center no, is not because we forgot, it's because that is the center of all this history. It's the, ac the acceptation, the, accep the acceptance of Christ. It's the moment, is the action, the moment in which Christ accepts to follow the will of another. The other day in the meeting in Gettysburg, I meditate a lot about the, the meaning of freedom. Because we use, well, no, we, I was, we, we, we understand freedom like the possibility to do what I want. But this is a lie. Freedom is the possibility to follow the will of another. Because at the end, you can realize that always, always we follow the will of another. Also, if you think that you are doing your will. Always. The point is, um, ¿a, quién, ¿a quién damos nuestra... To whom we give our uh, trust, no? To, to, in order to enter in the mission, it's very important the baptism. The baptism. It's for this we have the, this uh, baptismal font here in the center. Because in order to will, to follow the will of another, we need to kill our will. You understand my English? In order to, we, to follow the will of another, it's only possible killing our will. It's for this, we at the center of the church, we have this baptismal font that is in the ground. No? Because we to descend to kill our will. And to, we are afraid of that. But the good but it is it's not it's not. It's not the final, at the, con at the como si contrario, it's the beginning of an amazing life. I tell you, I stand up in, uh, in uh, 20, 1993 uh, in Denver in the meeting with the Pope. I stand up in order to leave the art and to follow the, the Christ and, the, and preach the gospel. And he uh, started an amazing mission in my life that I could never imagine. And never for sure doing paintings are incredible. I tell for you also. Like when the question, in the moment Christ, he accept, he accept the plan of his father, of another, start. It's like you press the button and everything start. And start with this, is the, he enter, God enter in the history. If we believe. Eh? Christ, it's a God is entering in the history, in a concrete moment of the history, in the Holy Mary, through the announcement of an angel. Like we have entered in the church, a Christ is starting to live in us, through the announce of an, an apostle, an angel in our life. After there is the nativity. In the nativity, it's interesting that for the Eastern Church, uh, many people ask, why Mary is, como se dice, uh, back to the child? No? We are, in our tradition, the, uh, the Western world, we used to have the nativity, is Mary looking the, ch the child. No? Very tender image. But Orient, uh, Eastern world, not. Why? Because this is theology. These are images, they are not a real picture. They, these are theology. No feeling. 
Um, and this is a meditation about the rejection of God. God is going, Christ is accepting the mission. He entered in the history, and what is the first thing is going to happen? The rejection. He is going to be rejected. No one is, uh, and Mary is meditating this. Also Joseph, Joseph is meditating that uh, another very important thing. No, this, uh, there is a, uh, a pastor, a shepherd, with him, it seems a humble man, no, a humble shepherd with uh, him, but this is the evil, you know this. The evil, the evil, the demon, this. Because he's in, it's possible from a dry wood branch that comes life, if you have not been with your wife, how is possible this? He's, he's in a big combat, but it's the combat that respect to you, wait, respect to you, if you follow Christ, if you follow the will of God. After is the baptism. In the baptism, it's interesting the position of Christ. You know, all the icons in the tradition, they painted Christ in the same. It's like this. Like this. Why? They are not, uh, they have not creativity, the artist. Why they follow, they follow, they follow always the same position? Because he's blessing these waters. But the position of Christ is the position of the Christ in the Sindon, como la Sindone. It's the Christ of the Sindon, the Shrap. The Christ in the Shrap is like this, no? This Christ is the Christ of the Shrap. But they move, it's like they, he moves one hand to bless, to bless these waters, these waters. After this, we have the cross. It's interesting in the composition that Kiko choose the moment in which Christ is still alive. Is still alive. He has not still the, how is it, the, eh? the boom. He has not still the boom. It's the moment in which he's giving Mary to John. He's giving a new maternity um, to Mary. Mary is meditating also this mystery. Uh, another, like, because this is theology and is not a realistic picture, for us, we, are, we, we can expect in the crucifixion Jesus suffering because in the, I imagine he suffered a lot, no? But you can feel suffering in him? No, you feel a king, peace. How many people here said me, oh, I feel peace looking this Christ because is this, this is theology. We, we rest, it's the, it's the gospel, we rest there. It's the place where we can rest. The suffering is more suffering here, because here in the Baptist, is, he is um, entering the blessing of the suffering. We are all called to bless, and we suffer because we cannot bless. At the end, maybe it's a, a little bit scandalous. We don't suffer because the sin. We suffer because we cannot bless, and we are made in order to bless. This is the glory of God. Not our perfection, but to bless. And because we cannot bless, we enter into the sin. But bueno, the question is, is the, the, the crucifixion. These are the four ter terrenal mysteries, could, we, ca we could say. Terrenal? Earthly. Er Earthly. Earthly mysteries. Okay, there are more, but we choose four. And after there are two representations of the celestial or heavenly mysteries. One is the ascension of Christ. In the same way, he entered, he entered in the, um, in the humanity, no? God entered into humanity. In the same way, he is bringing our humanity to heaven. It's a, it's a, um, we, we, we could speak about, uh, one hour about that. But it's amazing there also, it's theology. That means in the ascension was not Paul, St. Paul, but they painted always in the tradition, they painted St. Paul. 
And at the end, we have the Dormizio. In the Dormizio also was not Paul with them, but they painted Paul because it's, not, it's unthinkable. The Dormizio, the theology, the full church, the church. Because Mary is... Uh, it's interesting. We Christians, we don't uh, die alone. We are not called to die alone. It's for this Mary is with uh, his communi her community. They came to accompany, like today, you were today celebrating here the passing of a brother, oh, no? Here. Uh, well, this, at the Trinity, entered all this history. He entered, uh, put, in order, put in action all this. At, at the end, he, Christ, he went to heaven, and we, we cry in every Eucharist, Maranata, come, no? We proclaim we announce your death, we proclaim your resurrection, come, O oh Lord Jesus. No? It's the second coming at the, at the, in the top of the, of the painting, is the second coming of Christ. And Kiko chose from the 2,000, I think, uh, pages of the Bible, he chose just this uh, small phrase, or what is the phrase? Uh, sentence. This small sentence Love your enemies. Love your enemies. He is going to ask us just. The, about this, love your enemies, because it's what he has done for us. And we have this, uh, the intercession of Mary, St. John, and all the angels, with the Peter and all this, with the, ¿cómo se dice? Con el, con el apoyo, with the, the support of the two columns of the church. The, the institution is Peter and Paul, es el carisma. Peter and Paul, together. It's for this we used to put the two black pillars there, like a sign of Peter and Paul. Um, because loving our enemies, we can experience eternal life. One, only one time we painted in the Russian, uh, in Russia, I went to paint there, and I made like I have seen my master, Kiko. And after, when I was finishing, I asked the old ladies in the church, do you like it, the painting? And they, uh, uh, all ladies, the black, uh, black, veil, black veil, no, very, and I asked her, them, do you like it? And they said, we don't understand. Second time, do you like? It's very easy, no? You like or not? They said, four of them, and they translate they don't understand. No, no, it's very easy if they like or not. At the third time, they say, look, look, imagine in the Eucharist, after the credo, I turn to you and I ask you, do you like it? That makes sense for you to ask, do you like it? This is our creed. This is our faith. This helped me a lot in order to realize why we move all around the world bringing these images. This is bringing a life close to us, our creed. Um, If we all stand, the bishop will bless, so he will remain here, okay? There is a prayer, and then there is the incensation and the sprinkling of, of this icon. Let us pray. Good Father, lover of the human race, we praise you for the great love shown us in sending your word. Born of the Virgin, he became our savior, our firstborn brother, like us in all things but sin. You have given us Christ as the perfect example of holiness. We see him as a child in the manger, yet acknowledge him God Almighty. We see his face and discern the countenance of your goodness. We see him speak the words of life 
and we are filled with your wisdom. We search the deepest reaches of his heart, and our own hearts burn with the fire of the Spirit, which he spread in order to renew the face of the earth. We look at the bridegroom of the church, staked in his own, streaked in his own blood, but we revere that blood which washes our sins away. The church rejoices in the glory of his resurrection and shares in the promises he holds. Lord, listen to our prayer. As your faithful people honor this image of your Son, may they be of one mind with Christ, that they may exchange the image of the old Adam of earth by being transformed into Christ, the new Adam from heaven. May Christ be the way that leads them to you, the truth that shines in their hearts, the life that animates their actions. May Christ be a light to their footsteps, a safe place of rest on their journey, and the gate that opens to them the city of peace, where he lives there, reigning with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. my mouth. Because I looked for the Lord, and he answered me, and from every fear he delivered me. I will bless the Lord at all times. In my mouth always is praise. I take glory. Someone wish to bring some petitions for us to pray for.
Together we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. We offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Okay. As Donna and I will say, good evening. Peace be with you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Good, good. Thank you. How good it is to be with the brothers. How good it is to be with the brothers. How good it is to be with the brothers. How good it is to be with the brothers. Fine as oil on the For the final blessing, I believe there is uh, Hugo and Yadira. Where are they? If you come, because you are going to Boston, right, in mission. So if you come, the bishop will give you a blessing for your, as you start the mission. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. At each petition of blessing, we respond by saying amen. May God, who has manifested his truth and his love in Christ, make you apostles of the gospel and witnesses of his love in the world. Amen. amen. May the Lord Jesus, who has promised his church to be present until the end of time, guide your steps and confirm your words. Amen. amen. May the Spirit of the Lord be upon you so that while going through the paths of this world, you may evangelize the poor and heal the contrite of heart. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Very good. Thanks to the Lord, Alleluia, give thanks to the Lord, Alleluia, give thanks to the Lord, Alleluia, give thanks to the Lord, Alleluia. Hallelujah, give thanks 
Before, the, while the, uh, the, what uh, the bishop said tonight uh, in the homily was very good, very important, and also the, what uh, David said. Uh, I, I would like that you uh, to print this, also because what David said was very dense, but is a key for many of this uh, painting, which is, which is really beautiful to contemplate. Uh, I got to have in a booklet somehow the explanation of the painting and also what the bishop says. And to remind you that, God, that we are here because we are being called to a war, not against Trump or Biden or anybody. The war is against the devil. We are enrolling volunteers for, for this battle and God is calling you all because it's a, it's a real war. So. Good night. Brothers and sisters, there is an agape, a Mark, Mark, where is the agape? Mark, where is the agape? Downstairs. Brothers and sisters, shh. there is an agape down the basement, in the basement, and the priest, the priest can come to the rectory, the priest in the rectory.
testing, 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 testing. Testing, 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 testing. Testing, testing, testing.